I think my view on on ISAs and pensions is, I think you need a bit of both. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I don't know what your view is yeah. on it. But something a lot of people don't know about is something I call set and forget. So set up a direct debit into an ISA, which is what I do every month, of just your surplus income. So work out how much surplus you have, how, how much. So you haven't lost anything at this point. So if it goes up and down. You haven't gained anything or, or lost anything at that point. It's just the value of that asset. Mm-hmm. The only time you ever lose is when you encash it and bring it in yeah. into, into cash, and then that's that's really key. If your property went down ten, uh, we've had five fiscal statements. We've had four chancellors of the exchequer, three prime ministers, two monarchs, one war in Europe, and a porridge in a pear tree. We still have. We're doing cash for kids um, yep. this year, um, and they're gifted to to children in the in all areas. Um, but local, I've seen in the past now. Thank you. A great, uh, this is going to cost me £10 as well, but a great Christmas um, <laughs> and uh, a Happy New Year. Hello everyone and welcome to the Do More Of Your Money podcast, uh, episode 147. Can't believe we've got this far, uh, Luke. It was 146 Here last we week, 147 oh. this week. Um <laughs> could, uh, we've got an answer and um, we're answering people's <laughs> questions today, um, which we've got quite a number of questions to get through, so we'll, we will jump into uh, very quickly. I think everyone has been in the podcast today, with the exception of Hannah. Is this your, your debut? It is, um, yes. Hannah, can you just introduce yourself to our viewers and just tell everyone what you do? Yeah, uh, my name is Hannah. I'm one of the in-house financial advisors based at Head Office for True Potential of Management. Excellent. So some of our head office um, clients would have spoken to you in the mm-hmm. past along with, with Sophie. So, um, right, guys, I think we've, we've got a number of questions that have come from our viewers today. Um, and I kind of want to get straight into it. Um, you know, also, it's our festive party tonight. So we, we do need to get through this a little bit uh, more quickly. But I'm, I'm keen that we get some, some good answers for everyone. So let's get going. Um, Luke, I think this one's probably suited for you. Um, you'll go first. So a question from Jeff. Given the current state of affairs with the world and economy, is it worth delaying my retirement for another year? Uh, it's a good question. I think you know you should meet with your advisor and, and have these discussions if you are lucky enough where you could have another year of, of work. And that could be a year where you could save surplus income into pensions, ISAs, etc. And also meet your expenditure with income and, and not have to use your assets that you've set aside for retirement. So it's always worth having those discussions with your advisor. It's all based on you know your own personal goals, how strongly you want to retire. But if you are fortunate enough, enough to work for you know more time and have that income, then definitely you should consider that and discuss that with your advisor. Yeah, I think I'll add to that. I, I think it's key to, to understand that you've got to mention that you only do all, all so you only have one life as well. Correct. Um, yeah. And and sometimes it's worth just assessing your, your current position and going well, actually, what do I need from an income level? Mm-hmm. You know, we, we always base it on, I think it's to 100 for... To age 100, yeah, yeah, so we always sure it's sustainable 100, yeah. to age 100. So you're correct, Jamie, yeah, you, you know, you work your whole life for these these mm-hmm. pensions and these assets. It's important to remember you want to enjoy your retirement. So by having those those meetings with your advisor and those discussions, you can establish, you know, is it still safe to retire now? Can I still yeah. spend the money I want to spend and, and also enjoy yeah. my retirement now? And when you're thinking about your retirement worth, like assessing, you know, there'll be different types of expenditure, so you might not have that drive to work. But you might have that extra holiday or, right. or you know, lunch yeah. and, and, and things like this. So just just worth just um, looking at that. But as I said, you've always got one life. So I think it's, it's worth looking at, Jeff. Also, on the other end, you've got to think about what you're going to do. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I've mentioned this before, but my um, my dad's 60, 68, um, and he's still working. And he always says, oh, I'm, I'm probably going to work my full life because what would I be doing? if yeah. I'd probably be doing lots of chores in the house for, yeah. for my mom. Um but you know, I think these are the things you've got to think about. Yeah. But I think the key message here is switch to your advisor, look at the sustainability of your pension fund, um, and, and we can tell you um, we can tell you if that's right. You know, yeah. uh, good question from Jeff. Uh, right, we've got one from Mark now. Um, how do I know when to change my portfolio risk category? I'm nearing retirement, but I still feel suited to an aggressive investing mentally. Mentality, sorry, not mentally. Mentality. <laughs> uh, Hannah, one for you. Yeah. Um, so this is where the annual suitability reviews uh, come into play because that is what it does assess. Has there mm-hmm. been any changes? Is that going to affect your level of risk? Um, but even when you are nearing retirement, that doesn't necessarily mean that you should lower the risk. Um, it, it depends on many factors and also the timing of the market as well. It might not be the best time to, to de-risk. So that's where speaking with your advisor will come in uh, for that one. Yeah, great. I think um, it, it's interesting with risk because... 
I'm currently in one of the more aggressive portfolios. Um, and I think just to understand what this means is you're typically in the more aggressive, you'll be more equity based. Yeah. Um, and you've got, you know, if you're retiring at 55 to 65 or, you know, in between that age, you've got a good 20, 30 years ahead of you. Correct. And naturally, I think if you kind of look over the past, you, you look at the certain types of funds in the market, that the kind of de-risk as you go closer to retirement. And they were designed very much on the basis of you would you would buy an annuity, yeah. which mm -hmm. is where you're buying an income. And that's quite rare these days. So yeah. if, if you continue to make, keep it investing, it, it's it's another thing where you, sometimes people want to de-risk because they don't want to have that volatility while they go through the sort of later years of their life. But sometimes actually, if you've got enough um, enough disposable income and you've got enough um, in there, and I think it's, it's as you say, with the annual suitability view, complete your, an annual um, risk statement and those questions are designed to help you. Um, it's a funny one because I, I, you know, I'm, I personally, you know, for, from my view, not giving advice here, but for, from my view, um, I think it's it, it really depends on on you as an individual and how it you does, feel about that, mean, those ups and downs. You mentioned that people, you know, are living longer now. If you look at the average life expectancy for a, a female now, I think that's roughly eighty-seven, depending on on how old they are now. So if you're retiring at, at say sixty. You've got maybe a 30-year investment time frame still even when you retire mm -hmm. so it's quite important that you don't want to take you know potentially less risk because mm -hmm. you've got quite a long time period where you could be drawing money or it could be a, a pension that's maybe a surplus pot that could be left to family so you've got a very long it's, it's probably the longest term investment you'll make with a pension even when you retire mm -hmm. so it's quite important to have those discussions with your advisor on atr you know is balance suitable because that's going to give me a, a good level of growth but also some an element of safety as well over quite a long sustained period of time you, you, you you've advised thousands of clients or you have in yes. the last few years you've had thousands of clients you know on, on their pension and things and you must come across clients that, that probably fit this nature where they are yeah. retiring but actually they're quite yeah. aggressive in nature of course so look if you are an experienced investor uh, maybe you have a lot of wealth and actually you may not be relying on your pensions yeah. for a lot of income you might have mm. you know rental income or, or buy the letter or, or mm. other sources of defined benefit schemes that already meet your yeah. income needs and those sort of clients might want to take a growth or, or even aggressive risk where they're investing nearly 100 percent equity into their pensions because their main goal for this pension it's not to take income, it's just to leave it as a surplus pot that's going to be passed down to, to children or whoever else on, on death. Agreed, brilliant. Thanks, Luke. Um, Sophie, I've got a question for you, but before I have, before I mention your question, you passed an exam this week, didn't you? I did, yeah. So you passed your RO2, is that yeah, right? That's right. So where does, that, where does that leave you from being a qualified advisor now? How many more do you need? I've done four out of the six, so I've got two more to oh, go. Wow. Yeah. So not, yeah. not uh, you should be done by the end of this year, I would think. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not too sure. Well, <laughs> <laughs> no, well, well, well done, Sophie. I, think that I know personally how, how difficult those exams can be, so let's give you a difficult question. Um, <laughs> one from Lauren. Uh, how many beneficiaries can I name in my pension expression of wish, and what's the pros and cons of multiple beneficiaries rather than just one? Yes, yeah, so you can have as many beneficiaries as you'd like. I think, again, the pros and cons depends on your circumstances. Um, so, for example, people that have children and things like that. Um, we discussed this previously. It can be sort of good to leave some to the children, mm. even if it's just to teach them about the sort of impact of the pensions. Mm. Or you might have, you might want to split your pension equally mm. between, you know, your spouse and your children. Or some people like to leave some to charity as well. Mm. Um, so it's not, it ca can have a range of options. And I think the pro is... Um, you know, you want you want to really show why you what you want to happen to your pension. You've worked your entire life to save this money. You know, this really helps it go exactly where you want it. So it is just to carry out your wishes. So if you only want to leave it to one person, that's fine. That's your choice. If you want to leave it to five people, that's your choice. But I think the the pro is, if if you've got more people and you want them all in there and you want them all to to benefit from that, um, it does show your wishes. And I do think that now you can add in sort of further steps, can't you? So that Say if you did choose to leave it to a spouse, if there was ever an event where, you know, you both mm. passed away together, where it would go to, who would it go in line to next? Um, so it has a range of options. It's really, really helpful. And it just makes sure that, you know, when that time does come, we can carry out your wishes exactly how you wanted it to be. Yeah, mm -hmm. great. I think the um, the beneficiary ones, is, we've kind of talked about this a lot over the last few, um, few weeks and podcasts and webinars and videos. And it's really important. Um, Firstly, it's really important to set your beneficiaries mm -hmm. on your pension because it's actually quite difficult. I know we've had experience where we don't know who they are and finding out who the pension belongs to afterwards. That's very difficult. But there was a valid point you made there is potentially bringing your children in. Mm -hmm. Even if you just give them 1% of your pension, uh, 
that just brings the conversation. Actually, this is potentially what you're going to inherit. This is why it's important. This is why saving in a pension is important. Mm -hmm. This is why I did it. Mm -hmm. You know, these are the types of conversations it's good to have with your, your children and, and bring your advisor into it. So I think that's a, mm -hmm. some good answers there. Um, right, let's have a, a look. Um, right, <laughs> a good question from Gary. Um, Gary's <laughs> asked, why would I want to have beneficiaries in my pension? My aim would be to enjoy my money in, in my lifetime. Um, do you want to take this one, Luke? Yeah, of course. <laughs> I, it's a good question. You know, a lot of clients say to me, I've got this large pension and I want to spend it all uh, when I retire. But, you know, it's important, again, to link it back to the meetings with your advisor, how much you actually spend, how much do you need. You know, you might want to go on a load of holidays when you first retire. Lots of people do, and that's completely fine. But ultimately, you might retire with a lot of assets, say if it's in pensions, that's going to receive contributions for a long period of time. This could be quite a substantial pot. And actually, if you look at how we invest the funds, you could take your income needs sustainably, take what you need and enjoy your retirement, but also leave it as a legacy mm. to your children. So there's no reason why for a lot of clients you can do both. You can enjoy your retirement, you can spend what you want. Um, you know, you could buy things down where you could take more in the earlier years. And once you commence your state pensions or, or reach your 70s, you could spend less money. And actually there's, there's potential there to leave some to your children as well. So of course, I, I understand that. Um, Gary, yeah, so you want to spend as, as much as you can and enjoy your retirement, but there's no reason why you can't do both a yeah. lot of times when you've got these quite substantial pension pots. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, beneficiaries only come into play when you're no longer here. Yeah. <laughs> so it's good to just do the safety barrier just in case, you know, because whether it's a little or a lot left over, you mm -hmm. want it to go to who you yeah. want to benefit from yeah. the funds. Mm -hmm. it, I think it's important to mention, although we've covered it on, on the last few podcasts as well, if it's in a pension, the sort of tax efficiencies that that's left when it's passed to your children. So it's going to remain in that pension wrapper, which is tax free investment growth. So there's nothing that can do that other than an ISA really, which has um, lower sort of limits that you can contribute to. And it's also going to be tax free to them in terms of income on death under the age of 75. So mm -hmm. really important that you get that set up and, and obviously they can benefit from the, the same tax efficiencies that you did with that asset as well. Yeah, you don't look, I, I was talking to a, a client this week and we we're talking about his retirement. He's the same age as me, so he's got a little bit away from retirement, <laughs> uh, this gentleman. But he's got a few rental properties. And he's like, oh, that's my retirement, my rental properties. Yeah. And he's got a good business as well, like sitting on the side of it. And what I said to him was, Think about your pension, not necessarily as a retirement product. So mm. everyone like kind of thinks, well, I'll save your pension. That's what I'll do when I retire. But actually, it's a really good um, product to effectively use as an inheritance. Correct. So if you've got other source of income, like guaranteed income from a pension or, or guaranteed in or, or income not guaranteed from a rental from property. a rental property, then actually this might be a good vehicle to start saving and think, this could be my children's inheritance. Mm. So there's, there's, there's a couple of ways to look at a pension, not just a, a vehicle to say, Let's um let let's have a, this as a retirement vehicle. It actually can be a really good inheritance vehicle, yeah. um as well. Um, great. And I'm going to give you a question again. Mm -hmm. Um, what is the benefit of consolidating pensions? This is from Nick. Um, I saw I sort of see my multiple pensions as further diversification. My pension eggs are on all in one basket. Is that a bad idea? Mm -hmm. Well, pension consolidation it makes it easier for the client you know rather than having funds here there and everywhere it can be all in one place which will better help the retirement planning and the goal setting side of things um, also well the ability to monitor the, the performance as well but also knowing the amount of fees that you're paying you're not paying fees to a bunch of different providers it's all in one place and about the eggs in one basket the True potential portfolios benefit from advanced diversification. Um, so you're already getting a good spread across asset types uh, globally with just having the funds with true potential. So um, it just make it easier for yourself, really. Um, have it all in one place. Yeah, I think there's one of the questions there is diversification on product. Mm -hmm. So you might think you know, if you've got a if you've got a product with another provider and you've got a product with true potential, you think, oh well I've diversified, I've got if one pension goes down, but you tend to find that that although they won't be in the exact same assets, they'll be in very similar sort of high level assets. So that one will have equities, this one will have equities, and it'll be split. This one may have bonds, this one may have bonds. It's it's you've still got you can still have the same diversity, give it if not more with your potential from that perspective. Mm -hmm. Um anything to add to that, Luke? No, I, I think it's, it's just that plan is absolutely correct in, in what you're saying there. Yeah, with True Potential, a lot of clients might say it's all one platform. I, I want it spread between different platforms. By having it on, on one platform, you've got that ease of, of seeing everything in one place. And also with our portfolios, you're getting that diversification within the funds. So you're going to be investing in equities, bonds, cash, 
etc all in one fund so there's no there's no um, real statement of eggs all in one basket as such because we've got that diversification mm. of the assets there I think it's it's funny I, I'm looking at it, um, my wife's uncle's pensions at the minute and he's <laughs> He's uh, he's been basically he's got about he's got about five pensions. I think he's only had he's had three jobs. He's got five pensions. I'm not sure how that happened. I think mean, <laughs> like the company he had split, and and he's been work. He's, these pensions go back to '86. So that was a head scratching moment when right. he said, "Give me two pension <laughs> documents." And um, I had a Christine Gardner who was on the right. session a few weeks. So I had to ring him up and go, "This this this just feels a bit." I've never seen this before. So we had a discussion about them. But anyway, what he was saying was that. It's really he's getting three, four, five letters a year, and it was actually really difficult for him to consider like, where am I going for my retirement because I don't know what this one's going to give me. I don't know mm -hmm. what this. I'd so we discussed about consolidating, and with the exception of one, which is actually best to leave where it is because it had some um, some benefits in there. The rest of them we we're, we are going to consolidate into one, and it'll make life easier when it comes to retirement. Yeah. And I think this is the same with your, um, you know. At all ages, the chances are you've probably got four or five pensions from a workplace perspective. Mm -hmm. So it is worth cons it is worth looking at consolidating. It isn't always right. I think that's really important to understand that some pensions have benefits in them, and it might not be right to, to move those. But mm -hmm. it's worth considering it because it, it just makes your life easier when you're thinking about actually how much have I got, and, and also how much am I paying as you as you rightly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I think said, when you reach that age as well, you're just suddenly thrown into a world where you need to consider pensions, yeah. and it can be really daunting. So to get the help, yeah, just just definitely speak to someone yeah. and, and see what what is possible to make your life own life easier. Really. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, definitely. And I think this uh, kind of the point about taking advice there. Mm -hmm. like, pensions have changed so much over the last 30, 40 years. So. You know, being qualified and giving that advice. Sometimes you look at a pension and go, "Wow, that was mm. that's 25, 30 year old," yeah. and it's you know they've changed so much. You you do have to, yeah. you know, even even the experts sometimes have to have a little bit of a look up course, and just yeah. see actually what is that. Yeah. Um, right. So we want for you a uh, question from Ralph: Is pension consolidation straightforward, and will it cost me money as well as time goes on through consolidating? So. It is really straightforward from a client perspective and um, that's really what we're here for you give us a call you can speak to an advisor if you're not sure on you know where's best for you if you're consolidating the risk things like that and um, but generally it's putting in a few details on the true potential site mm. so you know who's the who's the policy with how much is in it what's the policy mm. number and then the transfers team take care of the rest mm. and then it comes over um, so it is really straightforward. You know, you do have the exceptions of if it's a more complicated pension, you know, if it's a DB pension or things like that, definitely you'll be speaking with an advisor. But again, from a client perspective, it's really straightforward for you. Um, it's not going to be you that's going around in the background looking into it all. You'll just be speaking with an advisor, looking over the options, and we'll be sort of taking care of the transfer on our side. Um, in terms of costing money, um, as Hannah mentioned earlier about fees, it can, it can actually save you money in the long run. You know, you know what fee when they're all consolidated. You know what your fees are. You know you're paying them to one place. You know when they're coming out. You know you've not got several different fees coming out here, there, and everywhere for different pots. Um, yeah, it's really straightforward. As you say, you'd always check with your providers that you know you're not missing out on any sort of benefits or there's not any charges for transferring. And um, but that's all things that we would check with you at the time as well. So it doesn't cost to sort of transfer your standard, do you not know, defined contribution pensions over to us. You know we're not. We'll, we'll get them sorted for you and in the long run yeah you can see everything that you're contributing and being charged so it should effectively save you money in the future great thanks so um great moon a slightly different topic from george i wonder if this is our george asking this question um uh, <laughs> hopefully not because <laughs> it would be worrying uh <laughs> i uh, i prefer investing in my stocks and shares as, as i know i could access it if i really need it but i also view it as an unofficial retirement pot could I transfer it into into a pension at a later stage? Yeah. Did it go for Luke? Yeah, of course. So in terms of an ISA and a pension, essentially two different products, two different wrappers, but in the way they work in, in terms of tax efficient growth, it, so both very efficient products. I'm going to assume, George, that you are under the age of 55, so obviously you can't access your pension, and that's why you want to put into an ISA, because you can put into an ISA and take from it at any age. So the short answer to your question is no, you, you can't transfer direct from an ISA into a pension, which is a different product. I guess in theory you could withdraw from your ISA in terms of cash and then put that into your pension. But these two products have different limits. You've got £20,000 a year uh, limit per tax year on the ISA. 
forty thousand pounds limit uh, limited to your income on on the pension. So, no, you, you can't transfer direct from an ISA into a pension. Although you may be able to withdraw um, or use surplus income to put into a pension at a, a sort of a later date. And it's one thing we're about to put some um, put some notes out on this to clients. Some communication, sorry, but there's one area you c- is worth considering about transferring into your pension because obviously you get the tax relief on it. Is um, is if you've got a general investment account. And normally you find with general investment accounts, we look to do what you call a better ISA every year, which is you move money from your general investment account into your ISA um, and, and gain from moving from an environment where it's obviously any growth is, is charged at a capital gains tax to a tax-free environment in ISA. You can do that with a pension as well. So, you know, if we're looking at the, the reduction in capital gains allowances that will be happening next year, it could be advantageous to actually consider moving money from your general investment account into your pension. Once again, speak to your advisor about this, um, but it, you kind of take the money out of that and put it into an area where you can get tax relief mm-hmm. uh, from it. Mm-hmm. Really, it, it could be worth you you're considering if you haven't thought about that. Um, mm-hmm. I think uh, my view on on ISAs and pensions is, I think you need a bit of both. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I don't know what your view is. Yeah, on yeah, I was, that's, that's, that's exactly what I was going to say. ISAs mm-hmm. can work so well alongside pensions. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're going to spend that money in your lifetime, you've got a pot of money that you could make larger. Um, ad hoc withdrawals from whether it's a new car uh, once a lifetime holiday the ISAs come in really handy there or if you want to stay within a certain tax bracket mm. that can top up your, your your income so yeah speak with an advisor and see what is the best way that you can plan your retirement uh, incorporating both policies yeah yeah and no, I definitely I personally have so I have an ISA two ISAs one for mine and one for um, Annie and and the pension and at the minute I've actually just switched contributions from my ISA to my pension um, kind of can't work that one out but actually I'm trying to like plow you know trying to look at me retirement focused well mm-hmm. might not be my retirement as I said before but <laughs> trying to, to focus on this but I, ha- I do have a mix of both I just think, I do think it's important to look at them that yeah. way because there is a level of access and a level yeah. of actually sometimes it's good to stick money away that you can't access yes. yeah. um, mm-hmm. I think if you look at investment time frames mm-hmm. and, look, and look at the goals so for me I invest monthly in ISA. Um, I'd recommend anybody who, who has you know, an employer with a workplace pension, you can take advantage of those employer contributions. So you can look at that and sometimes they'll sort of double match or triple match, so you're looking at that first of your pension. And then if you've got surplus earned income, you could put monthly in, in, into an ISA. So I've got something that I want to do over the next five, 10 years. That could be something that you could put into your ISA as a, a more of a short-term product, a, a, maybe a shorter-term goal than your pension, which is going to be primarily used for retirement, which might be a little bit further away. Yeah. Okay. Um, right, so if we'll go to you, um, question from Karen. Uh, what is the most convenient way for me to find my lost pensions? Can True Potential do this for me? Yes, we can. So we do have a pension finder service now. Um, so I'm sure we'll pop the number at the bottom here, but you can take a look at that that we mentioned last week. Um, if you were to give us a call, um, we would just take a bit of basic information, you know, your national insurance number, maybe, you know, if you have a rough idea, I think I had a pension from, you know, 2000 around about 2005 we'll take your address at that time we'll go away and we'll sort of use government services to look into that and try and find that for you and then like we say once you've found it if you want help consolidating it things like that and um, we can do that too so really straightforward if you just give the team a call they'll be able to take it from there brilliant I think I might use that service. <laughs> well, I've, well, I've been a TP since I was 20 year old, so I, I don't think they'd be looking very far for, for pensions. Cool. Yeah, <laughs> Worth, you, you can go on, um, it's a government website, yeah. and you can yeah. type in where you worked, and it'll tell you where they think your provider is, and you can ring up. And one of the To make things easier, it is easier getting a policy number for us. If you've got one, so if you've got an X letter, then we can hunt it out for you. If, but if you don't, then we can try and help you find it as well, yeah. um, just by getting a letter of authority. So mm-hmm. This, you know, I think we mentioned this last week, but the number of lost pensions in the UK, it's it's quite significant. Yeah. 20 billion, I believe, yeah. is the pound value, which is yeah. it's crazy to think there's, there's that much of mm. pensions that people don't know about yeah. that could be used towards our retirement. Yeah. yeah, no, definitely. And it's supposed to be the job hopping in terms of moving jobs yeah. on average five to ten in your lifetime. Yeah. It, they can happen. You can understand why people lose them. Yeah. Mm. Um, and it's something that I strongly believe the... I've always, I've always talked about things such as like pot following on, so your pension pot yeah. follows you, but you can do that, but you would have to transfer it with you, okay. um, or you just do something like this, but you put true potential to the side, and then you can consolidate in as you as you move jobs if you do. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Right, where are we? We uh, Emma, we've got three more questions. Um, Emma said, what's your top tip for someone starting out in investing? I've been auto-enrolled into a pension and I'm also looking to start in the stocks and shares ISA. Hannah, over to you. Yeah, um, so if when you're thinking of investing, you've got to have the long-term goal in mind mm. um, and also make use of the help and, help and support that you have available. Mm. You know, speak to your advisor because sometimes you don't know what you don't know until mm. you speak to someone. So yeah, just uh, utilize all the help that you can get and get a, a good plan and goal for mm. the future. Great, yeah. And Luke, anything to add on that? I would say my, uh, a top tip, something that's been quite useful for me um, is obviously, as I mentioned earlier, <coughs> you have your pension contributions and you can take advantage of your employer one. So it's great that you've, you've got a pension up and running and take advantage of that. But something a lot of people don't know about is something I call set and forget. So set up a direct debit into an ISA, which is what I do every month, of just your surplus income. So work out how much surplus you have, how, how much can you afford to invest in and put in this ISA, work that out and then put that so that's sort of automatic every month after you get paid. And what's going to happen then is you're going to benefit from pound cost averaging. So you're going to benefit from the funds going up, which is great because your ISAs went up as well. Mm -hmm. But at times where, where funds are down, um, you know, you're going to invest from investing in cheaper units. So you're going to get the best of both really by setting up that sort of monthly contribution. So if you're looking at an ISA and you have a lump sum, maybe you could consider sort of doing it over a longer term with, with sort of monthly investments rather than putting it all in at once and you could benefit that sort of way. Right, write that down. Set and set and forget. Set and forget. We'll, like use, we'll, we'll, we'll <laughs> use we'll use that on the, um, <laughs> on the well. This will be a marketing email coming to you soon. But it's a good. It's totally it makes sense. Um, you know, it's a, if you set yourself a direct debit, it's just like paying a bill. Correct, yeah. and it comes to the point where you think that's just one of my bills. It comes out every mm. month. As long as you can afford it and afford to invest yeah. it, then you'll you'll benefit mm. from funds going up and yeah. down. Yeah. And you do forget. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. It's just something you get yeah. used to paying, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. No, it's. Um, it, it's funny because I've, I've got the the junior ISA for I don't know if you've said junior ISA yet. Have yes, you? Have, you have yes, done that now. I kind yes, of put you under pressure there. Yes. <laughs> um, Just recently, and that's on a set and forget basis. Right. I need uh, to set no, I need to set up on a, on a set and forget as well. But There'll be lots of things I'll be forgetting. <laughs> Just <laughs> before festive. Yeah, with the amount of, you know, with the level of money he may have when he's eighteen, he, <laughs> this he is might it. be spending to forget you it. Could, you could access at eighteen. This is the the risky thing. I'm <laughs> now regretting that decision. I'm regretting that decision. As he grows older, I think. Just forget about it. Yeah, <laughs> just forget about it. Exactly. Um, okay. Uh, question from Alan. Uh, what do you expect for the economy next year? It put, can't possibly be as bad as as this year. <laughs> Hannah, you had a great line, so I'm going to pass this to you because you, you said something at the start. Yeah, so, well, 2022, um, we've had five fiscal statements, we've had four chancellors of the Exchequer, three prime ministers, two monarchs, one war in Europe, and a porridge in a pear tree. But, um, <laughs> but in all seriousness, it ha there's been a lot. Yes. A lot has gone on in 2022. And I feel like we are starting to see things slow down now, which is good. Um, but I believe there is going to be a program for investment management. Is yes, it? there is. Yeah, the, we'll, we'll be doing a few videos over the next over the next couple of weeks anyway that will dig into this a lot more on the on the economy for next year. You can never predict what's going to happen. I think I always kind of just rewind and, and you look at how much has happened in that short period of time, um, and you just you've just got to really think about actually it's a long term investment. Mm -hmm. It's ten. Yeah. 10 to 20 years it would be your investment level mm -hmm. and things will change mm -hmm. it will get better because this is it will happen it's you know history tells us stock markets do go up over a period of time and that that will happen i think that's mm -hmm. the key it's just been there's been lots of lots as you've said lots has happened this year yeah mm -hmm. it's, it's been a strange year and maybe a strange few years since the pandemic mm -hmm. unfortunately we, we don't have a crystal ball we, we can't tell what's going to happen the next year um maybe a couple of reasons to be optimistic i heard on the news this morning inflation's still high but starting to level off and you know a, Maybe a change in the war in Ukraine could lead to a positive outcome in, in markets, but we don't know which mm. way those things are going to go. In our view, and the view of our investment managers, is, is obviously it's, it's a long-term game. We're not trying to make sort of crazy gains over the next month, year, or a short-term period, because that would involve a lot of risk. We're looking for sustained growth over the long term. So it's always good to have that in your mind when you're investing. Yeah, I think that's dead important. On both avenues as well, if it, you know, we've seen a really good November. Um, and you know, obviously, September was 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 quite the opposite. And I think this is why you've got to, you do have to look at over the long term basis. And when I'm speaking to clients, and this is what I say: if you if you're ever worried, or you are you you know, there's some questions here about should I retire a year early, mm -hmm. or you know, should I invest in an aggressive? That's why we're here. Mm -hmm. So if you ever have concerns or questions, or anything, just just speak to your advisor, give head office a call, yeah. and we'll talk we'll talk you through it. And as I said, this is a long term game. It's, it, that that is the. 
it's a long-term strategy for us and mm -hmm. I think that, that's key to thinking that way and sometimes when we ask you that you can get your logins it may be you don't have to log in every day um, it's worth just just considering that when you're when you're looking at the value of your investment yeah yeah, absolutely. And, mm. you know, the fun, the funds that we have invested, the, your life savings, they're going to be invested mm. for the rest of your life. Mm. So, you know, if you do have any concerns, just, just speak with someone, yeah. even if it's just a reassuring phone call to say, look, you're not the only one who feels this way. But actually, as long as you're a means to do so, the best thing you do is nothing right now. Yeah, I think it's interesting because it, it's difficult because it's physical. You can see the physical cash and pound sign. But just to kind of let you know, you you, you've actually that's just the value of the asset mm -hmm. so it's like the value of your property so you haven't lost anything at this point so it goes up and down you haven't gained anything or, or lost anything at that point it's just the value of that asset mm -hmm. the only time you ever lose is when you encash it and bring it in yeah. into, into yeah. cash and then that's that's really key if your property went down 10 percent you probably wouldn't go up and you wouldn't go you and wouldn't sell, sell it yeah. um mm -hmm. and as I, I said i understand because all of my money is invested mm -hmm. um within true potential portfolios and I, I get that but i think it's it's really important to be um just before you're making any decisions, speak to somebody, speak to a professional. That is why we're here. That's that's why we, we want to help and we want to help people understand these things. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right, final question from, from Johnny. Um, Sophie, we'll start with you. Uh, what was your personal highlight of true potential in the past year? Um, I would probably say um, getting up to where I am with my exams. Mm. Um, so especially passing the one last week, I think that was probably the one that I found the most tricky so far. Um, mm. So yeah, getting to that point, um, it would be nice to get them finished off sort of yeah. early next year. But that's definitely been my personal highlight. Great, uh, and I think by the way, that's they're not easy exams. So <laughs> as we all know, so like well, well done. Um, next one's pensions, isn't it? It is, yes. Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll get you on a, another pensions podcast soon once you've passed <laughs> that. Actually, the one I liked, and I know if you do R O four was pensions. You, yes, you'll have to have pension box yes. as well. <laughs> so. uh, yeah. It's a, well, I think it's the most interesting. Um, if there's anything interesting about pensions, that is the one. <laughs> yeah, um, pensions, yeah. And Louisa, the lady who trains, is is an, is unbelievable at it. So <laughs> you've got a good teacher mm -hmm. um, on that. Uh, I think she must have done the exam. I think she she won an award for like getting the best mark in a pension <laughs> exam because she just keeps on doing the exams. <laughs> but she's uh, she's excellent at this. Um, what was your highlight, Luke? Well, apart from being sat next to Jimmy on this podcast right now. <laughs> um, Is that what we're we're trying to, <laughs> Luke's trying to get a pay rise and stuff like during a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's probably recently a, a client that I spoke to um, in terms of pension planning and, and speaking to that client, getting to know her goals and when she wanted to retire. And we did a, a pension transfer for her and, and having that phone call afterwards that allowed her to retire early mm -hmm. and meet her sort of retirement objectives in a, in a more suitable way. So for me, it's been able to help clients and, and being able to speak to clients and, and understand, you know, these are real people with, with circumstances who want to retire. So it's just getting that help for that client and, and having that conversation afterwards, really. Yeah, great. Over to you, Hannah, before me. Um, <laughs> so I think it'll be it'll have to be progressing within yeah. the company, really, mm -hmm. um, joining the advice team, um, starting a new new chapter. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, really enjoying it. But, yeah, getting I think qualified. It's, uh, quite interesting just to like let our viewers know a little bit about this because, um, as I mentioned before, I've been True Potential since I was 20, <laughs> so nearly 16 years. Mm -hmm. um, I'll whisper that. Um, <laughs> but like these are the opportunities that True Potential as a business gives local local people and people come from all, all over where, you know, we're all three are qualified and one very nearly qualified in the room and, and all to do with True Potential pushing people through through exams and, and giving them opportunities. You in the customer care team not so long ago. So mm -hmm. I think it's a, it's a really great thing that we do as a business, trying to um, educate. And, and I think at the minute we've got, I think we've got nearly 10 people in the customer care team studying for mm -hmm. level four financial advice exams. So it's it's a it's a really great thing. I, I think it's a, it's a good thing for clients and it's a great thing for, for staff as well. So well done on you two Thank passing you. exams. And Luke, you need a passing exam. Yes, yeah. it's been a while. Uh, yeah, you're doing another exam. It was a while since you. Um, my exam. highlight, I think it's interesting because we, for anyone, you probably see Daniel's notes um, on a sort of monthly basis. And one of the things Daniel mentions is about the charities on the bottom of the, um, on, on our emails. And I was gobsmacked by, we've, we've just put an email together that um, our clients will be getting very soon around how much we've made for charity this year. Um, including the Harrison Foundation, which is uh, a partner within the business. Um, we've done nearly half a million pounds of oh. charity donations oh. as a business. And it's funny because every month we get a, an email with a, a charity that's been, and it's typically been recommended by a member of staff mm -hmm. or an advisor or a client in certain cases. 
and um, what happens is we'll put money into it as as, as um, staff members, and that that's on on average probably getting you know two and a half to five thousand pounds a month on that basis, and then True Potential double that. Mm-hmm. So uh, the charity work we do is is quite phenomenal in this business and across the Harrison Foundation as well. Some of the the work um, David and Daniel do for for the social mobility is, is excellent. So I think that's although we do that every year, that's always a highlight for me. And I, I kind of walked past worth kind of we can get a picture of this to show unless we haven't got it, and we still have. We're doing cash for kids um, yep. this year, um, which I've personally witnessed. It, um, effectively, what it is just for our viewers is we um, will give money, but also presents, um, and they're gifted to to children in the in all areas. Um, but local, I've seen in the past, and I, I think it's I've personally seen um, children take advantage, um, not take advantage, but children having mm-hmm. uh, you know presents that weren't going to get any, which mm-hmm. is incredibly mm-hmm. sad and. Mm-hmm. If you, if you just get a picture of the amount of presents that have been donated right. from True Potential so staff this year, um, I was quite taken back by that. So <laughs> yeah. um, I think that's an, an unbelievable thing that we've done as a business in charities over the year. And I think that will that will continue because it's very much at the heart of, the, of how the business uh, operates. Right, I think we've took up enough time today. Um, some good questions. Um, first of all, thank you so much to you guys for, um, for answering the questions. Thank you to our viewers for... Um, for, for asking some really good questions today and hopefully we, we answered those but if you as I said if you, if you want us to go in a bit more detail give your advisor a call or give the team a call and we'll be happy to, to answer these uh, answer them further for you but I just want to say I, I think this may be my last podcast for the, the festive um, for the, this year but you never know because Graham tends to email me <laughs> um, most weeks if, if someone else won't do it so um, I'm kind of like the, the last uh, last choice for him but um, there you go but no thank you very much everyone I hope everyone has a, a great uh, this is going to cost me £10 as well but a great Christmas um, <laughs> and a, a happy new year and thank you very much for listening if you're, if you're interested, interested in taking your investing to the next level or would like to know more about the options available to you when you retire, then download our free guides to ICES and pensions. These are available in the video description below.